Hey guys, welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. I have here, this is Memo. He used to work with me at, at my <laughs> hospital and now he's working at a different hospital. But he has been uh, military, military trained and I wanted to kind of do like a little uh, Q&A with him and have him kind of take us through the process of, of what it's like to be a military trained uh, surgical technologist. So let's just start off with uh, kind of the process that you take, you know, when you start with going to the recruiter and, you know, like the interview. And so uh, my process was a little bit different. Um, I was already previously in the military before I went into the surgical tech program. I was in National Guard for eight years and uh, I was getting ready to go out and one of my buddies is a career counselor in the military mm -hmm. and he gave me a call and he was like, hey, I know you're, you're, you're set to get out and nothing's gonna change your mind. And, <laughs> and he That's was, how they get you back yeah, in. Oh, yeah, he reeled me in really good. And he's like, hey, so um, uh, you work in the hospital, right? And, and at this point, I was already working at Mountain View as a supply tech. Yeah. And you know, talking to you guys, talking to the nurses, yeah. uh, kind of inspired me to be like, you know what, I, I wanna be more than just supply tech, you know? It's, it's a great stepping stool to, you know, yeah. bring yourself to be a surgical tech. So. Um, he was like, you have two options. You could either be a, a, a combat medic or a surgical tech. And I was like, well, I'm already in the OR environment. Let me, let me go ahead and be a surgical tech. I, I want to I wanna advance myself in something I'm already in. Yeah. And um, uh, we went from there and I've been a scrub tech ever since. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So he, he said that he was a supply tech. He was a supply tech at our hospital first. And that's that's one of the main reasons he got a job at our hospital right out of you know training was yeah. because uh, pretty much all the management all the surgical techs all the nurses were like memo is such a good worker we <laughs> as soon as he's done with his training he needs to join us in this hospital like everybody across the board at the hospital was saying that mm -hmm. um, so what kind of well you kind of went through kind of what sparked your interest in the field because you were already kind of you know doing the supplies and stuff like that yeah but how long would you say the military training was? Uh, from beginning to end, um, me, because I'm previously in the military, I didn't have to go through boot camp or uh, basic training. Yeah. So that adds uh, three months to your tra total training. Mm -hmm. um, so if you were a brand new boot going in to the surgical tech program, it's three months of basic training, and then it's two and a half months in school, and then two and a half months, close to three months of uh, phase two, which is your clinical stage. And so, me, I only did close to six months of training because I've already been in the military. Yeah, so you didn't have to go through all that beginning. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, so, what is the school setting like? You know, you have like a classroom where you do curriculum for a couple months and then you have like a like mock surgery labs and stuff like that yeah yeah it's it's actually not as different as uh, a civilian side uh, schooling mm -hmm. so it's the, the biggest thing is it is so fast-paced yeah. it is going to grind you I could imagine like, like two and a half months like boom 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 oh, boom, boom. Yes, yeah. it, it was the it was probably the most stressful environment being in in the military that I've ever gone through and this is coming from uh, I've, I'm a combat veteran as well I've been to Afghanistan and uh, my job previous to this was a cable system operator, so it's it was a, a lot different than fiber optic work. Yeah. So from day one, you do uh, it's called a blood aversion test, where they put all these videos and show you what our job is in the military and what you're going to be seeing, yeah. and they knock out students day one. There's students walking <laughs> out. It's it is the craziest thing. <laughs> And uh, after that, it's it, it, kind of general stuff too. You do biology, you do microbiology, anatomy, physiology, <clears throat> and then you go into your systems, the gastrointestinal, you do, you know, neuro, it's, yeah. it's exactly so you go through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just extremely fast. Yeah, every two days you take a test and you can only fail two tests before they kick you out of the program. So you fail one test, you can retake that test the next yeah. day, but you lose out on a whole day's worth of of class yeah and um, uh, another big thing was you wake up at 0400 yeah. you go to your company and you do PT so you do physical training for close first to an thing hour in the morning. first thing <laughs> in the morning then you have to go back you you know shower 
you shave, you do whatever you need to do, then you go eat breakfast and yeah. then you go straight to class. So it, it's definitely a mental, a mental breakdown. You, they, they grind you out, like I said, the whole, de- the whole time you're there. Yeah. And you need to just manage your time so well in that course. It, it's insane. Dang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds intense. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds really intense. <laughs> Oh man. Um, so we kind of went through this. I was wondering how long it would take for somebody to serve to kind of get into a program like this. But you can go, like you said, mm-hmm. like straight from the beginning. You can mm-hmm. choose surgical tech and yeah. you know go through the basic training and get into it. But um, when you did, you have like any type of clinical rotation where you were actually working in like a VA hospital or something like that, or so um, that go? our program. Uh, consists of three different branches. So we have the Navy, the Air Force, and of course the Army. Mm. So the Army, we have different sites that we get to do our clinicals in. And if you finish, uh, so this is a, a good pointer for people that want to go in. If you finish top three in your class, you can choose where you want to do your clinicals. So you can go to Tripler, which is in Hawaii. That's nice. You can <laughs> go to. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it, it was. It was definitely a big boost. Yeah, uh, to that's go pick definitely those more incentive to it, like work your butt off. It is because you know who doesn't want to go to Hawaii. You yeah. know, I didn't. Get, I didn't get to go because my wife was like, oh, "If you're going to Hawaii, and I'm not going, you're not going to Hawaii." So I didn't get to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> so um, nice. you can go to uh, Walter Reed, which is in uh, Washington D.C. Just a, a bunch of different uh, medical sites that you can go to, yeah. and we work in the military hospitals on post. Uh, the Navy, they work in the VA and uh, civilian hospitals and Air Force they work with us uh, in military hospitals inside of uh, the bases as well so gotcha. it, it's such a good experience to uh, to go to those hospitals because the majority of them are, are trauma hospitals mm-hmm. so you're gonna get not only your clinical experience but if you volunteer or they see you hey you know this guy's motivated yeah let's let's bring him into trauma you know uh, that's that's exactly what I did on the weekends because I wanted to make up my um, my clinicals because you're supposed to do I uh, it's uh, I believe 120 100 120 140 cases to graduate the program yeah um, I wanted to, I want to just get them out of the way and focus on uh, my CST so I was on the weekends I was volunteering hey Pump let me go on call up. yeah yeah I wanted I wanted to get that real feel as a surgical tech yeah. so it, it definitely you. helped out was there some good trauma I did, yes. Actually, I think my first day volunteering, uh, we had a craniotomy. That's awesome. So it was like, here you go, wrap yeah. And I was, I wasn't even an hour in. They were like, oh, here comes our first trauma call. So, like I said, it's just they, they push you to do all these things to evolve you as a surgical tech, and I'm That's so great. grateful. Yeah. That's great. All right, so now that you're finished with the training, mm-hmm. you are obviously working in a civilian hospital, mm-hmm. and we talked earlier about this off camera, but uh, he's not full, well, you're still full time in the military because you're gonna be deployed again soon, right? I am, yeah, I'm actually getting deployed this year, and um, it's gonna be my first deployment where I'm gonna be doing something that I do on a daily basis and I'm, I'm gonna practice what I preach. So it's gonna be exciting. I'm, I'm part of a mobile surgical team, so I'll be doing surgeries in different countries mm-hmm. uh, for an entire year. So it's it's gonna be just, I don't know, I'm just excited, you know. If I you wanna travel, to this is the way to do it. It is, yeah. And yeah. I didn't put it out, but I'm in the Army Reserves, so that's why I'm able to do uh, both jobs, like scrubbing the military and, and the civilian side. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So, being in the reserves, uh, you know, I think is what is it like one weekend a month or something like that? You have to dedicate back to to training. Mm-hmm. You know, you're working in a civilian uh, a hospital right now, but one month or one weekend out of the month, you have to, you know, go out to your our units and, and help out and just it's a lot of training. So, uh, in the reserves. It's one week in a month, two weeks out of the year, if, if you're not getting deployed. Mm-hmm. And every weekend you go, it's really just readiness. So whether you be in the reserves or in the guard, mm-hmm. the reason you go to drills is because they want you to be at a ready state. Mm-hmm. So if anything happens, you know, these guys are in the reserves, hey, we can pull them already because they're ready to go. Yeah. So that's what it is a lot too. And, and when I go to those drills, mm-hmm. I'm actually teaching a lot of the the scrub techs that we already have there because the majority of them still have 
not been able to get jobs in the surgical field. Oh, really? So I'm helping them, you know, give them little pointers here and there and and uh, teaching them like, hey, you know, in ortho cases, this is what we do. In neuro mm -hmm. cases, this is how we, you know, do this. And I, I take it as a, I'm not only just there for my a weekend, mm -hmm. I'm there helping other people out to help me out as well. Yeah. 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 That was gonna be another question of mine. Like how many of the, you know, fellow people in your, in your reserves are working in a civilian surgical tech position right now? Or do they, have, do they just have like other jobs outside of yeah. what they do in the military? Mm -hmm. A lot of them, uh, from, at least from my side of the company, only three are actually scrubbing and all three of them are, are wow. certified. Um, a couple of the other ones, they're, they're still fresh off of school, so mm -hmm. they don't have that experience uh, to be able to go in. So uh, they're kind of just, you know, going through different schoolings or, you know, going through their jobs until they can get more experience. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Now, I know you're about to have your first deployment mm -hmm. as, a, as a surgical tech, but uh, have you worked with anybody uh, in the reserves right now that have been deployed as a surgical tech and what kind of experience they kind of have shared with you or what to expect? I do, actually. Uh, one of them, he went to one of the countries that we're going to right now and um, he's a great resource for me because he's been preparing me since the since we found out we were going to get deployed. He was right off the bat, hey, you know what, this is where you gonna need to do, this is where you should save, this is stuff that you should just keep at home, this is stuff you should definitely take. Um, and he's been such a great resource that I've taken all the things that he's given me and put it into um, working in, the, in my hospital now. Mm. So um, th that's one. Uh, the other ones, I believe, they, they've gotten deployed to uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, that, that's a completely different experience yeah. of what we normally face because ever there, it's just nonstop trauma, okay. and um, there knowledge is so you know it's so vast like it could be a small case but it, the smallest case could be the the biggest trauma case you've ever done in your, in yeah. your career yeah. so uh, i take everything that they've, they've ever showed me and just put it all into my you know surgical tech like little box like the, hey you know what <laughs> if, if i ever need to take this out i'm gonna just pull it out and i'll be able to use it yeah yeah so it, it's great i i love and not only just in the military side, like with you guys, you know, yeah. uh, walking to the hospital, I would always ask you guys for certain things like, hey, you know what, um, with this certain uh, certain doctor, what should I do with here, you know, uh, what kind of suture does he use if we were doing a certain kind of case? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, like me being deployed, I'm using all my civilian experience yeah. and putting it into my military because it's, I'm living it, I'm working with you guys, yeah. you guys are showing me, so. Um, yeah, I take everything and just keep adding to my little toolbox. That's what I've always preached too, is when you're working in an OR, it's all about teamwork. Because, you know, a lot of the times we do get put off on like specific specialties or specific surgeons. Mm -hmm. And every now and then we'll be thrown into another room that we don't really work in a lot. So it's good and it's, it's nice to be able to just, you know, talk to your fellow employees mm -hmm. and just, you know, get a better understanding of what you can expect from the surgeon or, or the surgery itself if you're not in there often. Yeah. So, all right, so last question, we're gonna wrap this up. And it's, it's just, you know, if you have any other, any advice for somebody that's looking into becoming, you know, military trained, whether it's Army, Army Reserves, mm -hmm. Air Force, Navy, you know, any, any advice for somebody that's kind of looking into it? Yeah, so the, the biggest advice I'll give you is um, when you go to class and, uh, you know, when you're going throughout the class, you take the most amount of notes you can take that you know you're going to be able to put into those exams and when you go into your clinicals. Um, but you're going to have a lot of downtime. And like with me, I had opportunities to get off post and, you know, I can go get some food, see the city. You know, we get weekend passes so we can go out and enjoy ourselves. Yeah. But this program is so fast paced, you're just not gonna want to do that. It, it, there's such a small gap between passing and not passing in, in these courses that you dedicate as much time as you can into studying, um, reading your books. I went on so many websites to find out, hey, you know, what's the best way to practice, you know, 
or um, like Quizlet. Quizlet was probably the, the Quizlet's awesome. Biggest, the yeah. biggest help you can you can have. In Quizlet's that. great. <laughs> yeah, and uh, even on the civilian side for schools too. Uh, yeah. I was talking to some people that were going through the surgical tech program while I was going through it in the military and. Same thing, like, oh, you know what? Um, on chapter 13 in the surgical tech book, I put up uh, some power notes on uh, Quizlet, so just check them out. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. I would get out of, because class normally would end about um, 1700, so five o'clock. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I would go get my dinner. I wouldn't even eat at the cafeteria. I would just take it with me back to my room. Just and just study. study. <laughs> I would study for three, four hours a night. And if I knew that there was a test, even if it meant I would have to study until 11 o'clock at night, yeah. still wake up at 0400, <laughs> I was going to do it just because I, I did not want to fail a test. You, yeah. you see people drop out like flies and it, it really does mess with you because you're like, oh man, is this going to be my week? Because you would see people that you know they're really good yeah. students, but even they would you know take a hit. It would be crazy. So just my biggest advice, like I said, is... Um, just study as much as you can. Give yourself a block of period, and don't overstudy yourself too. If you yeah. if you give yourself three hours, three four hours to study, use that last two hours to go to the gym. And that was a big thing for me. I would go to the gym, lift a little bit, you know, and then time myself. Okay, that was an hour. I wouldn't even go over an hour. Just I would hit the hour, yeah. go back to my room. I'd watch a movie or something, and then I would just go to sleep. So, yeah, study is definitely the biggest. Yeah. Your biggest asset in that in that course. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot one last question because I know I'm probably going to get some comments about this. So let's put this in at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. But were you able to sit for the uh, NBSTSA, you know, the CST exam? Were you able to sit for that after your military training and everything? So um, in phase two, so phase two is your clinical stage where you go to your hospital and you do all your cases. Um, you're going to be taking classes at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day uh, preparing you for the CST mm -hmm. and same thing the biggest advice I can give you is you go through your they'll give you a handout of the practice quiz yeah I got those questions and I would put them in Quizlet and just study my butt off I, yeah. that's all I would do because that's that's a big thing you know especially now I think the majority if not all hospitals you have to be they certified so yeah. you have to be certified and they required in the state of Nevada now there, yeah, there was oh, a yeah. state law that was just passed mm -hmm. recently yes. where the hospitals aren't even allowed to hire techs if they're not certified mm -hmm. so and in, in the military you, you don't have to have your certification you mm -hmm. it's it's nice to have it in the you know the military it's not going to give yeah. you a promotion or anything like that but it's it's still something really good to have, like me and us. Yeah. If we were both in the military and we got out, at least we're certified and we can go straight to a hospital exactly. after we got out. So that's a, that should be a big, uh, a big motivation for a new tech to get that CST. And it's free. Yeah. Not only that, like you're, the oh, military's paying for it. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that's, a, like, that's like 300, 300 bucks right there. Yeah, 300 Dang. bucks you saved, it's right in your that's pocket. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that's another huge motivation, like, oh man, like, I'm military taking a free test. For it. Yeah, so when I heard about that too, I think our program, I was the third, third iteration that they were starting to do the free uh, CST for students. Nice. Yeah, so <clears throat> again, it's, it's that much more uh, motivation to get in there, study, get your CST. And it's not just a CST. Um, you know, when people ask you in, in, in the civilian side or in any side, like, oh, what do you do for your, you know, your job? I don't like to just say, oh, I'm just a scrub tech. Yeah. No, I'm a certified scrub tech. Yeah. It feels that much better to yeah. tell somebody that, you know, I'm certified, I took, a, took an exam. Yeah. I'm, this is, you know, a lot better, and exactly. a bigger step than just being a scrub tech. It's a certificate of achievement, you mm -hmm. know, that you've dedicated a lot of time to, to oh, learning yeah. the field, you know, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, big thanks to Memo for doing this little uh, military video with us, and I hope it kind of answered some questions out there for people that may have been interested in uh, going through this type of program through, through the military, and uh, I'll see you again, and you'll see Memo again in another video too. All right, see you guys. <laughs>